Hi ACC students, Professor Judith Simons for Design One, Arts 1311. And today I'm going to be doing a demo uh, using acrylic paint on watercolor paper for project number six. And what I'm working with here is I had a student asking me how to paint trees uh, using the, the various brushes in the acrylic paints. Now the kind of acrylic paints that I'm using are the Liquitex Heavy Body Acrylics. Um, these are professional paints. These are uh, better than some of the uh, less expensive liquid Liquitex brands in that you get uh, better coverage and it is heavy body. But you also want to be looking to see whether it says transparent or opaque on the back of the tube. Um, and We've already gone over some of these paints, so I'm just going to move along and get started on this. Uh, she was working with an orange background on her paper, and she had trees that she had used the thalocyanide green uh, paint, blue shade, and uh, she'd added white to it. So that kind of gave us a blue-green um, foliage, and she had um, used a stiff brush, like a a round boar hair brush and she was going like this into the surface to create that. Now her forms were kind of like ball shaped, cotton ball shapes, and I laid it down a little bit differently in that I tried to think of it as more of an organic shape, like how trees have branches on the inside and they're kind of uh, you know more organic and not so uniform in shape unless they're trimmed. Um, so I left a little bit more space in here than she might have, and but I, I did that so that she could see what I did around these edges. Now I can go into this and change the, this, these shapes as well by bringing the background back into the tree branches, um, or leaves I should say. So what I did is I mixed up, uh, I laid down some colors here. Um, for the background, I mixed some of the cadmium orange and cadmium yellow light and uh, added just a tiny bit of white to it for the background. Um, this, I, act I did add a little bit of white to the thal th thalocyanide green with blue shade. And that's what gave me that color. So now I'm going for the tree branches in the trunk because she had used sort of a blackish blue uh, color scheme for that and I just added a little bit of the Mars black with some of the ultramarine blue to get sort of this um, indigo or Prussian blue mixture here. So I just grabbed a little bit of the black and a little bit of that ultramarine blue and I mixed it. I'm going to add a little bit of water to that and I'm using a small brush now there is a difference in brushes here. Um, I did lay down this background with my flat brush and uh, that got, I got good coverage from that. Now all brushes are not created equal. There's some for different uh, purposes, different you know rounds versus flats. And this one you can see, see how soft that is when I bend that? Um, that isn't going to really create a nice texture if you're doing that. It doesn't really hold the paint nicely and it's not firm enough. I like this one where I bend it. See how when it gets closer to the ferrule, it doesn't bend as easily there. So you can really move the paint around a little bit more. You can push it that way. So the small brush that I'm using right now is, uh, this one is a little bit like that as well, only on a smaller scale. So what I'm doing is I'm sort of twirling the brush to get a point here, and I don't want it super loaded with paint. So now what I'm going to do is I'm, it's almost like I'm drawing with it. So here I'm, I'm getting that trunk in, and not all trunks look like, you know, just a pole or they're completely straight. Now some trees, do grow very straight like that. Get a little bit more water on my brush, uh, but you want to look at you want to look at different types of trees and see or species, you know, to see what their shapes are, what their trunks look like. They have different bark. Some are a little bit more animated looking than others. If you look at the live oaks that we have in Austin, 
Texas, you'll see that they, you know, they're very, um, they have a movement to them. And other trees, sometimes like birch trees, I know we don't have them down here in Texas, they're uh, a little bit more, they're more straight. And, you know, even some pine trees are like that as well. So I'm just kind of taking, I guess I look at uh, live oak trees a lot, so I'm making it mine more into live oak. I'm just stopping there. I would have made it longer, like get, get gotten down into here a little bit, uh, maybe the root system as well. So it's sort of a gestural way of painting, and I'm sort of using the point of the brush. And what I'm doing is I'm kind of going in here to make it look like there's separation of leaves. So you're seeing hints of the tree trunk through those leaves. And I'm doing the same thing with these branches. I'm sort of breaking it up a little bit. So uh, if you've taken any drawing classes, uh, you've, you may have learned about broken line or implied line where it starts and stops. You can vary the thickness and thinness of that line. So here I'm, I can go back over this too with the other, with the foliage again. So that's the nice thing about uh, painting with acrylics is you can go over them pretty quickly because they dry nice and fast. Of course, there are mediums that can slow down the drying process and uh, make the paint flow better. I'm just using water right now. And sort of mixing it up because it starts to dry a little bit. Now, of course, you could be painting the tree first and then doing the foliage on top of that. But uh, my student had already painted her tree and had the, the, this blue-green, it's kind of a turquoise-green foliage. Um, she was, it's, kind of, it's a fantasy painting, but we could always, it has sort of a expressionistic or very expressive feel to it. All right, so let's just say that I am done with this and I'm gonna go into it with some more colors on top and get into this foliage a little bit more. Because as we know, uh, when you look into nature, uh, we don't look at trees and say the tree trunk is just brown or black and then the leaves are green. There's variation color within these leaves and back to the expression, the, I should say, impressionist, uh, and the expressionists, um, they were, they saw a lot of color within just one form. So if you, you know, you see Monet's haystacks, you can see a lot of reflected light from the sun and the sky. It's not just a yellow haystack, there's colors from the sky reflected in it and other colors bouncing off of trees and um, the, the uh, grass that was, or the fields that were surrounding it. So I do have a little bit of some green here, the thalocyanide green. And it does have that blue uh, shade to it. And I'm just going to go in here a little bit with this brush now. And that, uh, this, this that I, the, the blue that I laid down first, the light blue could be an underpainting to this. So I'm allowing some of that to show through as I do this, and I'm creating this sort of uh, feeling of bunches of leaves without having to paint every single leaf. And the best way to be doing this is direct observation or to be have an, have an image in front of you that you're painting from, whether you're replicating it exactly the way it looks or if you're just using it as uh, inspiration for shapes and um, proportional and spatial relationships. I'm just moving this along like this. And I'm, take, I'm letting you see my technique of moving this, this paint around. Now it's starting to pick up some of that 
uh, mixture that I did before because it's it's not completely dried so it's, I'm starting to be able to blend a little bit it's kind of dried on the palette right now but it, it might be mixing up a, a little bit in there okay so now look at how I'm doing this a little bit we're seeing some of these little leaves maybe there's a few here and there that are separated from it try to not Try not to let it become a pattern. Um, you want it to be a little bit more random than that. You don't want it to look really contrived or like a lollipop head. And I'm going to grab a little bit of this white with my palette knife because I like how I'm starting to blend this a little bit and see how it's still wet. So I'm able to go on top of that a little bit. So now um, I have this light source that I drew here. <laughs> That's just so you can see what my light source is. That's not part of my painting. Um, but I want you to see that the light is coming from a light source over here. So maybe we've got a little bit more light hitting on this side. So uh, I could be bringing some white into this. And then this side of the tree could be more in shadow. So now we're starting to create more dimension. So it's not as flat as it was before when you look over here. And then I'm kind of going on top of some of those areas where I have the branches to break those up a little bit. So that's looking a little bit better. And uh, on the other side, Just dry my brush off a little bit there, get some of that blue out. And uh, let's see what happens if I bring, grab some of this thalocyanide green. And of course, if I was doing a bigger tree or a larger painting, I could use a larger brush for this. I'm just going to grab a little bit of that black, see how this goes. A little water, it's a little thick. Keeps it from drying out too quickly if you add a little water to it. Twirling my brush to get some of that extra paint and get back to my point. And if I have any water drips on the ferrule, I wipe them off so it doesn't drip into the painting. So on this side, on this side, these leaves are darker because it's more in shadow. So we're gonna be creating a transition going from one side to the next. Uh, it starts looking more realistic as we do this, and it has a nice gesture to it. And you can work kind of quickly this way, and you can leave little bits of paint here and there and start creating a texture if you want to build up your paint a little bit. And we're still letting some of that orange show through in the background. And maybe some leaves coming out into here. Now, uh, when you are painting like this, when you're just doing that, or if you're taking a, let me see, I have a fan brush here. When you're painting like that, just specifically without using, this is sort of a blending brush, but if I were to take this and get some paint on here, and go over here and start doing this. Okay, those are Bob Ross evergreens. <laughs> and it starts looking sort of, I'm sorry to say, but those cheap sort of starving artist paintings that you can buy at the Ramada Inn, it has this formula to it. Um, now you can use some of this to lay down some colors, but then I would be going back on top of that the way I am to blend that a little bit. Uh, you know, he'll go back in with the white, with his fan brushes or whatever else he uses, and then he'll start doing a little bit of this. Tap, 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 tap. So he's bringing in those little uh, highlights, or maybe it's the mountains. So he gets a lot of mileage out of those brushes, but he's also using the, the really wide, uh, 
but he's also using uh, these wide brushes as well and doing some of that too. So he's got those big brushes and he's just laying it down. Can you do that? Absolutely. But you just don't want it to look like you used a brush and just did that because that's not reality. That's not how things really look. Um, it works really well to lay it down quickly. But again, I would be going back on top of that with um, perhaps a, a brush like this. Get some of that water out of it. And maybe be going into it and making it a little bit less patterned. And that's what brushes do. If you just use them like that, you're creating a pattern. It's just, it's really kind of like a, um, a stamp, so to speak. So I'm going in here. Now I'm starting to create some other shadows. And we're doing a little bit of blending as we go here. So that's how you, you need to be doing blending is you've got to work it while it's wet. Now with oil paints, you don't need to worry about that as much because they stay wet for a while. So you can move that paint around. And with that, then some people are using faster drying agents for that so that they're, they're not waiting so long for their oil paints to dry. Um, I like to, I'm a blender. I like blending. So, uh, see how soft this is getting now? That nice kind of soft uh, effect. And this is nice for, uh, you know, perspective, atmospheric perspective, if something's further away in the distance. This one would be further away because it's softer in appearance. And this one, uh, we're seeing a little bit more detail in it. So uh, what you could think about is your trees that are further away you have less detail on those. They get softer in the distance. And the ones in the foreground, closer to you, you're going to be seeing a little bit more of that foliage detail. All right, so I'm not going to be finishing this painting today. But I want you to see I really wanted you to see how you can play around with the, the light fading into, you know, from light to dark. Because the six categories of light are important in every form that you draw or that you paint. It's, uh, we did that with the grayscale. I talked about, I showed you objects and how the light uh, lays across forms. And um, it's the same way with everything. You've got to think about your light source. Otherwise, you start creating ambiguous space. That's why I was asking where the light source was in uh, the painting when I was talking to a student once was because some of the shadows were going one way and they were going the other way. So you always have to think about that so, it, so that it makes sense and uh, to the viewer. Now, if you're trying to play around with the viewer's uh, perception of your work, or create something very surrealistic and confusing, and that's your intention, or a little unsettling, then you want to do that in your work. That, that all makes sense then. Uh, now, I'm not done with this, but I'm just going to show you how you can bring uh, some of that orange back into this painting. We've got some complementary colors going here with this dark blue and then the orange in the background. I'm going to go into here and grab maybe a little bit of some yellow and orange and maybe a little bit of some white to lighten this up a little bit. Mixing that. Of course, you could be using your palette knife, but I like using my paintbrush. And I'm going back in. So I'm kind of bringing some little bits of orange back into these leaves. Some highlights from the sun. Maybe if I want some of that orange coming through in more places, it's getting kind of dense here. So we can go in and break this up so it's not so, there's not it's not so massive to give it more depth. And I'm moving that around a little bit because that got a little patterned in there. You can even come around the edges of these leaves, the tree. 
and see I've got some of this darker mixed up for the background let me fix that a little bit and I can go over that again you can see through it a little bit mix up a little bit more of that color and I'm coming around here again break some of that up up into here as well and I even have a little bit of some purple my student had some a little bit of lavender in the sky so I'm grabbing some of this purple quina cridone I'm never sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Quina quidrone. I'm going to grab a little bit of some white to make that a little lighter. And maybe we have a little bit of that lavender, that purple in the tree as well. Maybe it's higher up, reflecting off of that planet that's, that she had above all of this. Uh, I suggested that she put some lavender up into the mountains as well. For reflected light. It is starting to look very impressionistic. Uh, and then down on the trunks where that light source is coming from, uh, if the sun was a little bit lower or rising, you might see a little bit more of the highlights along the trunk here. Again, you don't want to be, I'm using the purple here, you don't want to be creating a set pattern here. You want it to look more organic and with the light hitting it. Kind of highlighting that texture of the trunk. See how I just did that, how that made it look so much more realistic? It gives it volume, it gives it shape, it defines its shape to bring these highlights in. You want to think about the way the light might be hitting it. I'm just painting this from my imagination right now and really looking around at it. If I wanted to get super impressionistic with this, I could be bringing some yellow into it, maybe a pale yellow. Grab a little bit more of my white. A little more. And bringing some little bits of yellow highlights in there as well. It's pretty. Maybe I could bring in a little bit of those yellow highlights into the lavender. Little broken line here and there. Yeah, that looks good. So we have some complementary colors in there as well. Well, I think that does it for now. Uh, I hope this helps a little bit, and uh, I can't wait to see what y'all are working on, as always. Thank you.